Hello, my divine kings and queens. I'm back to do another video. Um, in today's message, what we're going to be going over is there's a lot of people who are seeing where being different got you. And instead of standing behind you and supporting you and being happy, these people single-handedly manage to gather up others to go against you, to try to stop you. And they did it because the outcomes that they were seeking, and I don't know why I keep picking this up, but the outcomes that they were seeking, something is happening right now, that people are not getting the outcomes that they thought that they would get based on the treachery and the betrayals that they dished out to not only you, but to others. And I keep, you know, every time going back to this story of Joseph because there's so many different messages that you can break down and analyze and take out of that. And one of the things that I want to say is a big part of why the brothers went against Joseph, right? They wanted the, they were jealous of the affection that Joseph, Joseph was receiving from their father. And see, the thing is, you can tell the difference between how the brothers acted and then how Joseph was. Two different, complete different personalities, right? And see, the brothers got off on not being or acting in integrity, right? So if they said that they were going to do something, they would lie and do everything. And it wouldn't do what they said that they would do, right? And this was different from Joseph. So they would play on Joseph and play on his naiveness and play on his innocence because they knew that Joseph would listen, that Joseph would do it, and that he was righteous and that he lived with integrity, moved in good faith. If he said he was going to do something, he was going to do it. He told no lies. And he wasn't a bully, right? Um, but the thing is, these brothers wasn't right in their soul. And they wanted more of the father's attention. And so, yes, it's rooted in jealousy and envy and deceit, all these characteristics that they had. But the outcome that they were seeking, they didn't get. Because even after they sold Joseph into slavery, now it's like the father went from physically showing Joseph all this attention to mentally giving it to Joseph because now he was stricken with grief. And so instead of having to see, physically see them, his father give this, their father give Joseph all this attention and liking and favoritism. Now it was having to hear how sad he was, how much he missed his son, crying, seeing the man hurt. And so in part, you know, what came to me is, it's almost as if like I had a dream I was in this classroom setting and I was in this classroom setting and everybody, the teachers was like, oh, get up and put a check by your favorite color. But the only color, color that was present on the board was red. It's weird. But I had to keep dreaming it in order to say, okay, okay, yeah, I need to come on here and say this. So the color, the only color that was shown was red, right? So everybody got up and checked this color red, but my favorite color was green. And so I'm like, well, green isn't present on this board. But when I walked up, instead of putting the check next to red, I got the marker. And I immediately when I when I got the marker, everybody was just like looking at me like, what is she going to write? Like, what is she, you know? And I started writing out my favorite color, which is green. And then I put a check next to green. I didn't just check red. And so immediately after I did that, the teacher was like, oh, you can't do that. You only was supposed. I said, but what was the purpose of it was a combat. I was being combative. Like I was like challenging her. You know, it was like a debate. Like, well, why are you telling me to come up here and put my favorite color when the only color that's present is red? You do know that there's other colors that exist. Right. And when I said it, <gasps> other colors that exist, who is she? Is she some type of like I'm like. Are you crazy? Like, there's other colors than red. Why is everybody looking at me crazy? And so eventually there was like this other group of people that was in the back that were all laughing because they thought that I had made a fool out of, out of myself by doing what I did. But eventually the teacher was like, 
you know, I looked this up and it, there are other colors. There's yellow, there's orange. What was I thinking only putting red up here? You know, I'm actually gonna go with yours and I'm gonna put the color green. So what happened is everybody started checking green, but then there was others that said, well, my favorite color is orange. So I'm gonna do what uh, Victoria did. And I'm gonna write orange and I'm gonna put a check next to it. So it went from that to everybody praising and looking up to me for being different and that same group that was in the back that was laughing they were now they were envious and they were mad because the outcome that they thought like they were laughing at or whatever it changed and it went from you know people looking at me like I what I did was wrong or that it was weird to actually praising me and actually want to follow in the same footsteps and do what I did and then they were stepping in and being bold enough to write what their favorite color was instead of just checking what was given, trying to be like everybody else. So it's like people were hating on you because they see where being different got you. They were hating on you because you were bold enough and you had that courage to stick up and stand up for what was right. And not only stick up and stand up for it, but actually live by that and stand in that, right? And these people that you know whatever it is that you're doing it does not have to be what i'm doing you don't have to have a platform but it could be you setting the standard for how you treat your kids maybe your mother didn't treat you right but everybody see how you're being a good mom to your child it could be something so totally different from you know you're choosing to go back and get a degree and everybody said that you couldn't get the degree and then not only did you get the degree you went back and got another degree you got three four five degrees and you're just exceeding people in ways that they didn't think ways that they couldn't even imagine you get me what i'm saying and it's like i saw them went from like quickly from laughing to who does she think she is like da 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 da, -da. mind you these are the people who went up and checked the color red they weren't bold enough so it's like what god is trying to show you is Never mind people who can't be strong enough or bold enough to stand in their truth. And then they sit back and want to hate on somebody else because they're standing in theirs. These are weak and these are cowardly people. And not only that, they're evil. This needs some healing. And I know I keep saying and I know I keep going back over this story of Joseph. And I know I keep saying that you guys had some treacherous people. But it's because it was in high volumes around a certain period and cycle of your life. And what you don't understand is the power that was invested in you, the power that God had given to you, the power that you had because he was walking with you, because he was protecting you. This is what enabled you to stand in your truth. God had a reason behind why he was doing what he was doing. Sometimes he'll take people of whom he can use to set an example and set the standard for others. And then in the end, what he wants, it happens and the mission is fulfilled. Any way that you can, you guys try to do what's right. You have a lot of people who don't live by them same morals, those same codes, those same standards. I keep trying to tell you guys that. And these are the very same people who will sit up here and hate you for that. They hated you because they saw we're being different and got you. Because God prepared that table for you in the presence of your enemies. It didn't look See, when he was building it, it didn't look like it was going to pay out for you. Maybe they thought he was building a table for someone else, but not you, because you was always paying to be a failure, to be a dropout. Hmm. But God was preparing that table specially for you. Carved your name on the table after he got done so people know this is yours. Whoever you want to invite to this table, it's up to you. Whoever you want to share your food with that I put on this table, it's up to you. Whoever you want to share your money with, all the money and the abundance and prosperity and the gold, everything I'm about to lay out on this table, it's completely up to you who you invite to this table. But I've shown you what you needed to see. He prepared it for you in the presence of your enemies. And what once was laughter and mockery, instead of praise, you got envy, you got jealousy, 
You got pure hatred from these people. But God say never mind that because the people who you needed to get praise from, you're getting it from. See, the thing about him preparing this table, he ain't just prepare in your local community. He ain't just prepare, prepare for the locals to see. He prepared it for the whole world to see. He didn't just limit you. That's one thing about God. He didn't limit you because he don't want you to put a limit on his power and the things that he can do because there is no limit. So there is no limit on what he's going to do for you. There is no limit on the amount of blessings that he's going to bring to you. There is no limit on the success that he's going to give you. The purpose that he has for you, the lessons that you need to learn, the missions that you're going to accomplish. There's no limit. The people who you needed to get the praise from, you got it from. These are the people who should be at your table. Not the ones who was there, but judging the whole time God was building it. Like, well, where is this going to pay? Where is this going to go? And then when it went somewhere, now like, well, I'm happy I'm at this table. <laughs> God is giving you that power to say, who needs to stay at this table? Who you need to get away from the table? And then who you need to invite to the table? Because everybody didn't have your best interest and everybody was not supporting you from the start, from the beginning. Like I said, when you when I stepped up and I started writing out a different color, it was like, it was Greek to these people. Like, why would you do that? Why not just check what was there? Why would I do that if that's not my color? That's not me. Well, you asked me, to step up and put a check next to what my favorite color is. If my favorite color not red, why the hell am I going to put a check next to red? I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get that marker. And I'm going to write out green. And then I'm going to put a check next to that. Because that's what? My favorite color. He enabled you to stand in your truth. He enabled you to speak your truth. He enabled you to be proud of your truth, even when others weren't, and others weren't on board with you. It wasn't for them to be on board. It was for you to do what you needed to do, to inspire who you need to inspire, to set the standard where you needed to set the standard, and to create the code and live by the code. He prepared that table for you. For you in the presence of your enemies. Some aren't going to understand that. And like I said, you got a lot of people who did things to you and expected a certain outcome. And the thing is, people don't understand that when something is not meant for you. God is always going to route it to where you understand that what's not meant for you is not going to be for you. You keep trying to chase and go after something that's not meant for you when you need to be getting on your path. All Joseph's brothers had to do was sit back and be appreciative of the gift that he had. But they felt like, well, if I just we just get rid of them, well, we'll get father's attention. Well, we'll be the special ones. But they weren't chosen to be special. Joseph was. And still in the end, they weren't chosen to be special. All they did was cause the father more grief. And in the end, they had to come seeking Joseph's help. So for all of that, they still had to go to the person of whom they, they thought, oh, getting rid of was going to solve all their problems. And in the end, this was the person who helped them resolve their problems. You see what I'm saying? When something is not meant for people, people don't get it through their thick skulls. They sit up here and they try to figure out ways of that they, of what they can do to attain it when it's not meant for them to have. And it causes further complications and delays, drama, and problems where it don't need to be. But this is people's lesson. And like I said, all of this transpired in front of your very eyes and your enemies. He prepared that table for you. And 
even though people see we're being different, got you, we got a lot of people that's not happy. Not because they don't get what you're doing, but because it's not happening for them. But they don't understand there's something special out there for everyone. If people just take the time to heal and figure out what that is, instead of being jealous of what someone else is doing and have, if it's not meant for you to do that, that's why it's not working out. You got to find out what's going to work for you and God will bless it. But as for you, you see what being different got you? You see what standing in your truth got you? What being real and authentic and fair got you? What having morals and integrity and respect got you? Because God is with you. And don't you ever forget it. And until next time, I want y'all to stay prayed up and be blessed. And understand we ride together, we slide together, JC Gang for life. Get others to join the JC Gang. And understand that if you need love, you got it in me. If you need inspiration, motivation, a life example, you know you got it in me. I'm going to be your sister for life. I'm going to be here for you until the end of time. As long as God breathed breath into my body, I'm going to be here for y'all. And I'm going to bring that R-E-A-L, real. I'm going to bring that real. I'm going to come with that real and not that fake. I'm going to keep it 100 and I'm going to keep it a buck with you because I don't know no other way to be. Standing up in your truth, standing up in it and being different, open up doors for you. You keep on your path no matter what people say, no matter what people do, no matter how many people that you lose, no matter how many people ain't walking with you because you know that you ain't never alone and you know that you'll never walk alone. Till next time, stay prayed up and be blessed. I love y'all.